Hello, all of you wonderful people, and welcome back to the Slacking Armchair Supporter channel. My name is Ashley Kelly, and I'm here to give you a match preview for Sparta Prague versus Liverpool. That's in the Europa League. It is tomorrow. It's a quarter to six kickoff, and Liverpool are away. It is in Prague at the Epet Arena, and I will be live tomorrow for the game, of course, like always. But um, today I'm going to go through a score prediction, a lineup prediction, and how I think the match will go. And um, just before I do that, please, if you haven't already, leave a like on the video if you're enjoying the if you're enjoying my content. Also, hit the subscribe button. That really helps me out, helps me grow a following, and hopefully can turn this into my job. So thanks to everybody who has already done that. And um, so let's get into it. So the match itself, um, it's it's a funny one. I don't I don't watch a lot of Czech football, ironically. Um, it's yeah. I just had a look through the form of Sparta Prague. They seem to be doing absolutely incredible in their league. Um, but then again, what is the competition like? Is it is it really you know? Is it a one horse race? Is it a two horse race? Um, it seems to be a bit of a two horse race between the two Prague teams. Their last game actually was the derby, the Slavia versus Sparta derby, finished in a draw. Then before that, Sparta Prague seem to have won nearly all all their games. Um, the only game they did lose was the first leg of the playoff to get to this stage of the Europa League. That was against Galatasaray. They, When they were away in Turkey, they lost 3-2. But then in the second leg, they won 4-1. So, you know, the home advantage seemed to really help them out there. Um, or if it didn't, they just seemed to dominate Galatasaray in Prague. So that could be a potential factor as well. I know... I've been to Czech stadiums, I've watched ice hockey, I've watched football. They are big supporters, they get behind their teams. So I know it will be a bit of an atmosphere. Liverpool should be able to deal with it. Of course, we've been to plenty of atmospheric stadiums. So with that, all that said and that in mind, Liverpool, um, very, very lucky at the weekend to get them. Um, to get the three points away, um, away to Nottingham Forest. That last-minute goal from Nunes is absolutely incredible. I can't believe it was that good that the Arsenal fans were complaining about the amount of stoppage time that there was. That's that's how much it means, clearly, which I find, I find absolutely hilarious. But um, And also a lot of the, the, the media afterwards, how it's a monumental... Um, Error and oh, just a lot of there's just been so much rubbish about this little thing. Like it's a drop ball and it's just gone the wrong way. It didn't have nothing to. It didn't lead directly to a goal. It didn't cause any problem. Like the goal came nearly two minutes after. There was so many passages of play in between. It's just been an absolute shit show, pretty much. And it's been quite funny to watch because it's normally us on the opposite end of it. You know, like with the Spurs goal the handball against Arsenal. There's been plenty go the opposite way. Um, so it's actually quite nice to be just watching rival fans complain. And um, of course, they, they hate us even more. So that's that's fine. Um, but yeah, anyway, back to my point is that Liverpool were very lucky. Um, some players returning from injury, which is great. Saboslai got some minutes. Nunes. Salah is in training, which is great news, of course. Um, he was training today. So hopefully he'll play a bit of this game. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe he'll come on for 20 minutes or so at the end, depending on how it's going. But I think he'll be rested for City on Sunday. Um, I think I think it will be tight. Like I said, with the atmosphere and everything, I think it's going to be tight. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would always love to see Liverpool win 4-0. But realistically, I think it's going to be tighter than that. So let's get into my... That's how I think the match is going to go. Let's get into my score prediction. My score prediction for this game is going to be 2-1. You'll see from my lineup, I think there is going to be a bit of change, um, maybe resting some players for City on Sunday. And also, if we lose this game 1 or 2 nil, there's still a massive chance that Liverpool can win the overall tie because Sparta have to come to Anfield next week. Obviously, you want to go out and win the games. I'm never going to put a score prediction down that's going to go against Liverpool or even as a draw, even at City. Um, on Sunday, I will not be putting out a negative or a draw um, against Liverpool. So I'm gone with a 2-1. I think it will be tight. But like I said, it could be 1-1. Liverpool just need to come out of this game with no injuries, really. And 
yeah, keep ourselves, like, don't get hammered. I don't think we will, but just don't, like, lose the tie in this game and settle it, get City out of the way, and then settle it next Thursday at Anfield, where we'll be a lot more comfortable. So as you can see from my lineup, I've gone with Kelleher in between the sticks. He's, well, he's the world's best backup keeper at the moment. He's absolutely incredible. Three clean sheets in a row. I'd love to see him get another one, um, but we'll see on the day. I do think it's going to be a bit of more of a test. It's got more competitive this game. Then on the left, uh, left back, sorry, I've gone with Simicas. Um, I think he'll come in to replace Andy Robertson to give Andy Robertson a break, get him ready and well rested for City on Sunday. Um, I've also um, done the same thing with Van Dyke. I've took Van Dyke out. Now this could work either way. I think Klopp is going to do what he done against Southampton in the FA Cup last week. Um, I think he's going to start Canate or Van Dyke. I've gone with um, Canate to start alongside Jarrell Kwanzaa, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's Van Dyke starting alongside Jarrell Kwanzaa. I think he might he might actually stick with that for the whole game, or I, I think he'll do what he done against Southampton, which is take one off at half time and bring the other one on. Um, I think we'll see that again. Just. I just weren't sure which one to go. I went with Canate. Um, and then I've gone with Connor Bradley at right back just because we don't really have anybody there. Um, I was thinking maybe Endo could go in midfield and Gomez would go there. But then I'd rather rent Endo had a rest um, ahead of City. So that's why I've gone with Bradley at right back. And I've gone with Joe Gomez in the defensive midfield role. It took a while for me to get used to it. Well, I mean... The first 20 minutes of that first game he played there, he looked awful. He looked really out of, just out of place. Um, and it just, it was uncomfortable. I felt uncomfortable for him. And then the second game as well, he took a bit of time to get into it as well. But when he does settle into it, he looks pretty decent there. He's been very versatile this year and I can't fault him. He, you know, he's been thrown in at, you know, left back. He's a, you know, he's a centre back. He's been thrown at left back. He's been thrown at right back. It's not too uncommon for him to play right back, but left back in the defensive mid as well. It's just he's handling everything that's been thrown at him, and I'm, I appreciate him so much for that. And then the rest of midfield, I've gone with Soboslai because he got what was it, about thirty minutes um, against Nottingham Forest, so I can see him getting a start. Maybe the same again with the Van Dyke Canate thing. Maybe bring him off at half time or. Definitely with 60 minutes or so, he'll be coming off. But just to get some some game time into his legs, he's been away for a while. He did have 25, 30 minutes or so against Forrest. Um, but yeah, just to get him back up to speed, because he'll be on the team sheet against City. So that's my thinking with him. And then I'll go with Clark. And that is that will be his third start in a row. I also... He hasn't been terrible. He's been okay. Well, he's, he's actually been pretty good. Um, obviously, not as great as what else we have, but I'm thinking of the rest for players because City is a far bigger game and we've played an awful lot of football and there's a lot of players there who are looking a bit tired and just need a bit of a break. So that's why I've gone with Clark ahead of the likes of McAllister or Endo. Um, but that as well could very well be McConnell there. Or maybe another young youngster. I'm I'm not sure, but I went with Clark because he's he's the one getting the game time at the moment. He seems the most the most mature out of the lot of them. Um, and then up top, I've gone with Nunes, Diaz, and Elliot. Elliot, I I have a sneaking suspicion that Elliot's not going to start against City, so I think Elliot will start this one. I think Salah's going to be back, um, and he'll push Elliot straight out of the side. And I think the midfield against City will be Endo, McAllister, Soboslai. So Elliot will be kicked out of the team. So that's a perfect time to get him in here, get him a full 90 minutes and see what he can do against a Prague team. See if he can, you know, work some magic and score a couple goals, get some assists, whatever. And just see if he can, um, you know, run rings around him down that wing because he, he is quite a tricky player. And um, I do quite enjoy watching him play. So hopefully he can do that. Then I'll go with Diaz on the left, um, you know, standard there's nobody else there really maybe you'd put Gakpo in there and then Nunes through the middle Nunes did come on against Forrest and again this is just to get him some game time get him off at half time or after 60 minutes and then get him ready for the City game 
So that is my lineup prediction. So that lineup in full is Kelleher, Simicas, Kwanzaa, Kanate, Bradley, Gomez, Clark, Soboslai, Diaz, Nunes, and Elliott. Let me know how I did, guys. Let me know if you would change anything or if you've got any of your own score predictions. Even if you've got a prediction as who you think is going to score, get it in the chat. Let me know and, you know, keep the dialogue going. We can have a chat about it. And um, thanks, everybody, who watched and tuned in. I'll be live tomorrow for the game about 10, 15 minutes before kickoff, like I always am. So that's going to be sort of like half past five. And I look forward to seeing you all there. Again, if you haven't already and you enjoy the content, please like it and please subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. And until I see you next, I'm the fucking Reds.